Welcome to the Ultrascale Architecture ASIC Light Clocking Quick Take video. In this video you will learn about the Ultrascale Clocking Architecture, learn how to configure a mixed mode clock manager, and understand the benefits of ASIC like clocking. The clocking architecture in previous generations of Xilinx FPGAs has typically had a central global clock spine from which clock signals are distributed to the left and right clock regions of the device. This means that the center of the clock network is always at one of the 32 global clock buffers that are located in the geometric center of the device. SKU therefore accumulates from the center of the FPGA regardless of where the clock signal is driven. Now in ultrascale the clocking architecture has been completely redesigned. There is a uniform matrix of clock routing and clock distribution tracks in both the horizontal and the vertical direction. The clock routing tracks shown here in red enable the placement of the center of a clock network in the center of the logic that is driven by that clock signal. So the clock distribution tracks then take the clock signal to all of the desired destinations. This structure enables many more clock networks than previous FPGA architectures, with the largest ultrascale device having up to 720 global capable buffers. This dramatically reduces the effect of clock skew on the maximum achievable performance of a design. All ultrascale FPGAs are divided into clock regions that are of fixed height and fixed width. So all regions are 60 rows of CLBs tall and the same geometric width of logic blockgram and DSP resources, resulting in the same time taken to cross each and every clock region. So every clock region has 24 horizontal and 24 vertical routing and distribution clock tracks. These clock tracks are all connected together so can be used to drive clocks throughout the entire device, but can also be segmented on clock region boundaries. This segmentation means that clock signals are only driven where they're required, just like in an ASIC. An additional benefit to only driving clock signals where they are needed is the reduction of unnecessary transistor switching and therefore a reduction in dynamic power consumption. Similar to existing architectures, the ultrascale architecture contains clock management tiles which contain mixed mode clock managers or MMCMs and phase lock loops or PLLs. These components are capable of generating multiple clocks with different frequencies and phases from a single input clock. At the junction of the horizontal clock spines and the vertical clock management columns, there are the global clock buffers. The global clock buffers in the ultrascale architecture have been redesigned to be highly capable and flexible while simplifying the buffer choice in relation to previous architectures. At each junction of the horizontal clock spine and the vertical CMT column, there are 24 buff GCEs, 8 buff G controls and 4 buff GCE divs. Any 24 of these buffers can access the vertical and horizontal clock tracks and the MMCMs and PLLs. Anyone with an existing design targeting a 7 series FPGA can rest assured that although the components have been redesigned, the software automatically migrates clock networks into the ultrascale architecture. So all 7 series buffer types mapped to a buffer in the ultrascale architecture with no loss of functionality. Likewise, any MMCM and PLL in the 7 series design will automatically be converted to an MMCM in the ultrascale architecture. So let's have a look at how to set up an MMCM in Vivado. So here we have an empty project in the Vivado design suite targeted towards a Kintex ultrascale FPGA. So the first thing we need to do is locate the clocking wizard. So to do this, we go to IP Catalog. Once in the IP Catalog, we can select the FPGA Features and Design option, and then expand Clocking, and we see here the Clocking Wizard. So if we double-click on the Clocking Wizard, we get the Clocking Wizard to configure the MMCM and the PLL. So you can see a simple diagram 
illustrating the ports that we have selected and a GUI here with multiple tabs depending on what we want to configure at any given point. So firstly we get the option to choose between an MMCM or a PLL component. In this case we're going to stick with an MMCM. There are numerous different features, frequency synthesis, phase alignment, dynamic reconfiguration, etc. that we can choose whether to turn on or off. Note this here is a new option to the ultrascale MMCM. CDDC stands for Clock Divide Dynamic Change. This enables us to change the output counter values of the individual outputs without having to reset the MMCM uh, in order for those changes to take place. So this is a new feature for the ultrascale MMCM and one that we think will be very useful. So the first thing we typically want to do when configuring an MMCM is select what our input frequency is. Now this is the frequency of the, the clock signal or the oscillator or, or whatever our clock source is that we're driving into the MMCM. So simply to change this we can maybe 150 megahertz. Simple. The next thing we need to change is the output clock values. So let me just expand this screen a touch. So here we have our seven output clocks and we can configure those to our desired output frequencies and any phase shift that is required. So in this case let our clock out one be the same as the input frequency 150 megahertz. Let's check that we want a second output clock and notice this is now highlighted on the diagram. Let's maybe call this okay let's leave it at 100 megahertz and then clock out three we want maybe 50 megahertz. So these are all fairly simple frequencies to derive from the internal input clock and we have the ability to change the duty cycle, to change the phase and so on. So the reason I expanded the window there was to select the buffer type that is driven by each of these output clocks. So we have the ability to choose whether it's a buff G or a buff GCE. So whether we want that clock enable port uh, to be accessible or of course if we want no buffer at all we can select that option. So we can then click on the MMCM settings tab. In here we are uh, able to override but we have effectively a report of the M value and the D value of the MMCM so how much we're multiplying and dividing our input clock by and the uh, divide values down here of the output ports as well or of the output clocks so to get the exact frequency that we require what is the divide value that is necessary. As we go through the tabs port renaming tells us what our output signals will be called and we can change those if we so desire and it also reports the peak to peak jitter on the um, individual output clocks that we've selected. So then finally we get to a summary that tells us what our input clock is, what we're uh, configuring the various output dividers to, to the M, the D value also, and at this point we can simply click OK to generate that MMCM, generate the files, and the clock wizard is now in our sources in the uh, design sources window. So now the clocks that we're generating with the MMCM can be connected up in the rest of our design. So the clocking architecture in ultrascale FPGAs has been completely redesigned to provide numerous powerful benefits resulting in ASIC-like clocking. With a focus on increasing design performance the clock routing and distribution structure reduces clock skew by the flexible placement of clock networks around the logic that they are driving. Setting up a clock network in an ultrascale FPGA is really very simple. The clocking wizard takes you through all of the steps necessary to generate a clock network and configure an MMCM. Taking existing designs into the ultrascale architecture is also a simple task. The Vivado design suite automatically migrates all existing clock components to the new primitives available in the ultrascale architecture. 
So thank you for watching. To learn more and to get designing with the ultrascale architecture, please visit www.xilinx.com/ultrascale.